if our ancestors five, eight generations ago had a camera and we were able to record all of our history, just think of how rich all of that would be. You know, there's so much more to us than what's portrayed in media and in film. And when indigenous people have the opportunity to point to lens in their own direction, I think it's really amazing to see. That's really the, the full picture of what healing is. So to see this generation really have the control and the power to say, this is what I'm comfortable with doing. I'm not doing this just for a check or just for an opportunity. And to see them even go a step further and say, oh, this, this is the story I want to tell. You know, there's so many possibilities. Like seriously, the possibilities do not end of what we could do with the Indigenous Film Collective. So Cutswood's motto has always been about language. It's I say Blackfeet, okay? Stoney Dineko is speaking school. Hello, my name's Kylie. How old are you? Um, I'm ten and how you say that is Gibo in Blackfeet. It was fun and now we got to learn every part about the buffalo. When I was in Alan's class, we made um, a buffalo necklace with a tooth, and so we showed that in video, and then so we, um, I think it was the horns too, and then so after we made it, we had to put like our own like sound thing, like, like music, yeah, like Indian music, and so we got to edit it, and yeah, it was fun. When you think about colonization, what it's taken away, it's everything, you know, from the ability to think, to speak, to act, our history, our language, our ceremonies, songs. So Cutswood has been a real rehabilitation center, if you will, giving back our children identity to who they are as Nitsitapi. You don't think of buffalo as just another animal. You know that there's more to them. They were our staple. We survived off of them. We depended on them. We used almost every part of them. When we look at the word he knew, the word for buffalo, it's so close to another word, ini. That's the word we have for death. And the way Blackfoot works is we always have a balance in our life. For the male, there's a female. For the good, there's a bad. You know, there's always an in-between. And that's the extremity. So by, by buffalo, e nil is actually representing all of our life, where e ni is representing what happens after life, which is a journey in itself. But that's how powerful that animal is and has always been to our people, as it represents our livelihood. And I think it uh, goes to show today how we are having an increased amount of buffalo on our community at the same time, our languages are being revitalized, our ceremonial protocols and practices are being revitalized, and there's a lot more awareness of who we are as Nitsitapi. You know, in a way, the e Neil represents our consciences. And at a time when they were nearly wiped out, rubbed off the plains, our children were being taken away. Our languages were in great danger. Our future was in great danger. But as we see today, them coming back, the resurgence, so is our culture and our traditional ways of knowing. So we're not we're not trying to go backwards. We're just trying to create a new forward, a better forward that's actually healing and not destructive. It's not man versus nature. It's not the wild and man. It's us with nature. When we think about Inio, you know, we're just now relearning a lot of stuff that we've forgotten about the Indian, how important they were. But the way we modeled our societies historically was directly off of Indian. How we went from male and female roles within our societies, within our culture and our communities. You know, these things were very important. But we can't forget our values and our teachings and how important they are. Uh, so I think continuing with Indian 
will continue on in that path of revitalizing. But I'm just very proud of my students here at Cutswood because I know the next generation will take it even further on into the future. And they have that ability to do it with the email more so than my generation did. So I'm excited to see what will come from the next generations of Cutswood students.